Oh, a chest. Let's first spot check our surroundings before proceeding. There is another chest up ahead and a statue and a sarcophagus. I am almost tempted to look inside that first. In fact, it is more interesting anyway. I sleep the sleep of kings. Be gone or join me. So which is it? Going away or joining our mutually exclusive? Also, you have a rat chewing on you. Uh, are you sure you don't want some help with that? How dare you disturb my slumber? Be gone! Oh, fine, whatever. Uh, that rat can chew the archaeological importance right off of you then. What do I care? Oh, another friendly face. This is either a table or a bed. Well, technically any flat surface transforms into a table at some point in its life. There are things in this world that are flat and by George, someone will find a way to put something else on them. Here we see an example of why Kanum is so important. Pottery is cool. There's about seven lip vases here. They seem empty though. Either that or I just can't see what's in them. Okay, this is starting to look like some kind of storeroom. Maybe we should finally raid the chests. I can't live my life as if everything is an RPG. It's not like I'll find a class two dagger or weapon inside. Wow, daggers, I think. I, I see two cutting edges, so definitely, probably, possibly, partially daggers. Ooh, a nice statue. Wait, didn't Alex draw this in his journal? It was around the part where he said he knocked his leg into something and heard the sound of hollowness befitting a secret compartment. This looks like it might open. I'm very sorry, statue, but I'm gonna have to lift your... skirt? Ah, a hidden scroll. Alex mentioned being reminded of the quote that proceeding the gods is bad and you should be subtracted or, or something and, and following the gods will reward you. I don't know what those symbols mean though. The vertical ones look like notches I'd use when tallying something and the horizontal ones look like either a long telegram dial or Mayan numerals. Personally, I think it's how much each god bet in their last poker game. It's all eight gods we discussed earlier. By no means a complete pantheon though. I'm going to take a picture because whatever it is, it looks mighty useful. Oh good, this camera does have film in it and it's one of those instant develop ones too. More scrolls. Although, given there are many of them compared to the secret compartment, they probably have less useful information on them. Oh, it's about the gods, again. Well, I mean, they were gods of these people. I expect them to factor into a lot of their culture. Kanem, goat-headed god, divine potter who fashioned the world, O gentle and constructive one. Sebek, oh. Well, there's many alternate spellings for the gods. I personally use Sobek. I'm still gonna call him Sobek. Sobek, crocodile god of the Nile. Allow our small vessels to pass unhindered, for we will give thee offerings of food. I wonder what the food is. I don't want to know what the food is. Bastet, twin sister to Horus, goddess of music and dance. The cat is your symbol. Lord Horus, god of music and art, most handsome of the gods, Ooh. son of Osiris, your symbol is the hawk, and the all-seeing eye. Oh, Anubis, guide to the halls of judgment, where the souls of the dead are weighted. Yours is the symbol of the dog. Lord Osiris, God of nature, you gave us the calendar which predicts the floods of the Nile. You have taught men to produce grain. It is you who gave man the tools to build civilization. Thoth, God of magic and Lord of the scribes, you are the keeper of the archives of time. You appear as the ibis-headed man. Set, traitor of Osiris, evil one. 
You stand for the forces of chaos and destruction. Wait, this isn't about a god. No, wait, it is. But this is about one that isn't covered by the main eight cast members. This is about Hathor. Only in the temple of the gods will you be able to use the mirror of Hathor, goddess of truth and vision. If used wisely, it provides the power of second sight. So there's a lens of truth in this temple, or properly called the Mirror of Hathor. Well, we explored this room, and no lens of truth. Just some scrolls and daggers and a mummy that value solitude from other people more than having his eye gorged out by a rat. Wait, how is he even slightly alive? The mummification process is rather grotesque, and the internal organs would all be gone, and you know what? Never mind. Ah, more spears. More of a reminder about how I hurt an innocent crocodile. Well, this place is certainly a bit more empty, at least. If it would be, if Anubis wasn't there warming things up. Hey, Anubis. Um, <laughs> what's up? Seek the tablet. You know what? That's a good idea. I'm already looking for a lens of truth, and now I can add a tablet to my collection. All right, that's some arrows. Well, just four. I hope your archers have phenomenal accuracy if four is all you have. Well, I should just be thankful I won't have to fire an arrow from a bow anytime soon. Ah, some more pots. I wonder what's in them. I wonder if I want to know. Ah, some baskets. I'm not too hungry, but it's good to know where the food is. What do we have anyway? Well, it's hard to tell. It looks like we've got some pomegranates, um, some figs. I can't make out what's in that top basket. I can't see what's in the basket on the right. Oh, I have arachnophobia, so whatever is there is something I can do without. Stop poking your head out at me. Yeah, I know you're there. Go away. He's teasing me. Anyway, huh? Wait, that's not food. At least the spider has protein. Oh gosh, I don't like the mental image I just gave myself. Whoa, I was going to do my hair, but this doesn't look like the personal mirror I was expecting. What is this anyway? It looks like some kind of x-ray vision. Hold on, this is the lens of truth. Uh, the lens of Hathor, the mirror of Hathor. Well, it's not a mirror. I can see through it. Anyway, it's Hathor's thing. Yeah, I can see the rest of the fruit now. And I can see the rest of the spiders now. Oh, secret writing. You shall not pass. Oh, leave. Sorry, predictive typing. The temple. Storeroom without replacing the mirror of Hathor. This thing said I couldn't leave, but I'm one of those gotta try for myself kind of people. Oh, looks like Anubis doesn't really have anything in there. Hey, and I, I play Anubis. I play. I, I'm kidding. Please don't kill me. Nothing really of interest in here. At least nothing we can see through the lens. Alright, let's leave. Ugh, a force field? Maybe that's why the electricity is arcing the way it is. Damn. It shocked me, so I can't leave. And now the lens is broken. Okay, good. I just shook it and it turned on again. Anyway, let's just see what's in that chest. Oh, it's locked. Well, can I at least see what's inside? Oh my, a scary face. You know what? Maybe it's best that I stay closed. Or not. That looks interesting. It looks like some kind of book on the left side. There's definitely something there and I want to know what it is. Okay, what's inside these things?
More spiders. On an ink of all things. Wait, those look like strings in the middle. No, wait, is that is that a sistrum? No, oh, whatever. Uh, those look like maybe canopic jars. Um Oh, a scarab key. And it isn't guarded by like spiders or anything. I am a big believer in preserving history, and history says there was no X-ray lens found at this dig site. And who am I to argue with history? Dancing eyes. What's with dead people being alive here? The rat I saw earlier was chewing on the right eye of that mummy, too. Maybe that rat just likes certain kinds of eyes. At least this guy's eye is still there. Oh, that tablet looks important. Um, is that face constantly, like, eyeing that tablet? I think he's trying to tell me to stop focusing on him and pick up the tablet. Fine, I'll pick up the tablet. Oh right, of course. Anubis told me to seek the tablet, and now I did. And now what? Well, some of these symbols look like those on the God Scroll. The horizontal and vertical bars. The others are kind of interesting. Daggers, arrows, tables, vases, chests, scrolls, spears, pots with handles, baskets, and sarcophagi. All things I saw in the storerooms. Like I said, the vertical lines look like tallies. Like, there's one sarcophagus, two ornate tables, three chests, which is oddly exactly how many I remember of each being in the... Wait. Oh! Right, yes! Of course! A couple thousand years and some things never change! Some scribe had to do inventory that day. Assuming they did inventory correctly, being thankful every item has a different quantity so we can hit all the numbers, and assuming no one stole anything... We could deduce at least a bit of the Egyptian numbering system. That sounds like something that may be useful, especially if I want to get back to the time gate. That is likely, according to Alex's journal, in that pyramid I initially entered with the combination lock. No use going through a combination lock if I don't even know how to read the numbers. Okay, there are at least six of these that I can recall now. I notice a distinct lack of arrows, being four. So a horizontal bar is four. The one, two, and three I accidentally deduced earlier thinking out loud. I recall seven of those vases, and the symbol looks like an upside-down seven with a large tail. Or possibly a two, but that sounds more confusing. The scrolls, though. I don't have to count them, actually. There are eight gods, and there was one scroll per god. That's eight. Then there was a scroll about the lens of Hathor. That's nine. Then there was a scroll about the gods, and they're presumably poker bats. Now that I know this is a number system, that seems like a more realistic possibility. So the triangle upwards, the carrot, is ten. I should go back and count the daggers, pots, spears, and baskets. Spears is six. So six notches, easy to remember. Kind of hard to see, actually, since two are almost on top of each other. Eight vases. A single horizontal line is four, so two is eight. That's a bit different from my numerals, where a horizontal line was five. I hope I don't mix them up. I need to ingrain into myself... That horizontal line is four. Baskets are five. I <laughs> don't have a good monomic for that one. Let's just say five is the weird looking one. Okay, daggers is nine. That's another odd looking one. I like to think of as a group of people trying to walk to ten, but someone trips, so they only get to nine. So we got the number system. Now we know what the combination numbers are. That doesn't actually tell me the actual combination, unfortunately. What's... Oh, a kitty cat! Oh, 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 I'm not alone! Kitties! Oh, oh my gosh, look at it! It's so adorable! With its paw, and its tail wagging, and its meowing! Oh my gosh! Gosh, it's so adorable. I want to... Oh no, I think I scared it. Come back, kitty. You are going to love me. Did 
there's meaning to all things. Even the stones speak of it. Yeah, whatever, I need to pet the cat. No! Kitty! Oh, oh, oh. I'm sad now. Where am I? Sorry, my brain stopped working. I don't even know how I got here. It must have been that cuteness proximity of the cat. It must have damaged my thought processes. <laughs> okay, um... Kind, disembodied voices from earlier. Could you please repeat what you said? I sort of wasn't paying attention the first time. There is meaning to all things. Even the stones speak of it. Well, I suppose that means I should look at these obelisks. Well, that's Thoth. He is a bit... What's the color? Mauve? Yeah, he looks a bit mauve today. Whoa, that's the same sound I heard from the extruding stone with the moai. There must be something significant about that number and Thoth. Thoth is number one. Thoth is my favorite. So I shall interpret that to mean this is a top ten list. Ah, Sobek. He came in fifth and... Wait, sorry, damn. Getting my numerals confused again. He is fourth. And surprising no one, green. Ah, some more wildlife blaring itself at me. I'm always confused at what certain signals mean. Did that mean stay away? Did it mean feed me? Or that I stole your watch when you weren't looking? Well, I still have my watch, so logically that only leaves stay away and feed me. Well, thankfully he left on his own, scurried right underneath me after completing a circle. If he crawled up my leg, I'd be freaking out right now. Maybe it's a she. Ah, Satesh. He came in eighth. And he is sort of a red plum color. The misunderstood Kanem. With the number I have the most difficulty remembering. A five, I think. Nice middle ground. That color looks purple to me. Or violet. Oh, we have a rather important building coming up. Those statues, though, aren't in a sitting pose. Okay, Osiris. Also green. Well, Sobek is more of a dark green. Osiris is more of a... Cucumber? <sighs> yeah, anyway, he came in seventh. Ah, Horus! My buddy Horus! Baby, good show and I say. His color is sort of an olive oil yellow. He came in third place. Okay, Marsha 10, fall over. She came in ninth? I'm sorry. She looks rather cayenne to me. Finally, we find Anubis. He's dead last at 10. My eyes keep switching between maroon and brown. That was probably a good time to point out I'm slightly colorblind. In the crystals you will find, gods and values are combined. I have an inkling that value means numerical value, but maybe we should examine the crystals. Wait, when did I start suddenly listening to random voices? Today has been crazy. This... Ugh. At least this room is really relaxing. Hey! That's Mauve! Wait. Mauve was Thoth. Red was Satash. And behind me should be purple for Kanum. So I expect with Sobek to be green, and there it is. So these are little miniature crystal representations of the gods? Yeah, enough about the crystals. They look nice, but I want to explore this temple a bit more. Once again, eight crystals on this table, or in this depression in the table. These aren't as colorful though. I wonder what this is all for. There is an offering to make. 
to appease the waiting snake. What? You know, I just realized Alex never mentioned these voices in his journal. But if he heard this one, it would make sense why he would decide that he'd need a spell or a charm to defeat a snake. Okay, it is a snake. It's probably the same one he mentioned. The one he said he vanquished. Well, it's back. Okay, that snake is almost as tall as me, and I'm an Amazon. But there is no reason I should worry, right? I mean, I'm a goddess. Snakes bow to me. <laughs> Or they can blind me and laugh. That works, too. That snake has a very deep and human voice. Well, as... Or maybe actually the voice is just laughing at me from earlier. You're supposed to be helping me. Well, as Alex said, my vision would return. But I probably shouldn't try that again for the sake of my vision. And the fact that green looks awful on me. So the less I get on my beautiful clothes, the better. So an offering, hey? Maybe it wants one of the crystals. Let's give it the one for Sobak. I mean, after all, they are practically related. Well, not completely. I mean, snakes and crocodiles are both reptiles, but they still have a vast number of millions of years of evolution between them from a diversion of a common ancestor. So, yeah. Wait, that's not Sobek, it's Kanem. This is all wrong. Oh, I can change it. I guess that this crystal needs to be set to sew back. The top is the image of the god. The color and position will help us determine which god to use. The middle is the number, and the bottom is the symbol I saw in the god viewer watching with thingy, plasma stone, liquid, whatever. This is all too easy. Okay, that should do it. Wait, what does this do? Maybe the middle table has something to do with it. Well, nothing changed over here. I'm sure that's right. Alright, let's mess around with this a little bit. Um, I don't know. I'm just gonna leave it at three for now, but I'm not sure why this isn't working. This thing doesn't seem to be doing any... Oh. Now it's glowing. I assume that is because it is now right, but... Why? I brute forced that. Obelis showed four, not three. It's like an off by one error. How is three related to four? Well, I mean, they are both part of the set of natural numbers. Three is four minus one. Minus, 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 minus! Of course! The missing piece. Alex said in his journal about the saying that if you precede the gods, things are subtracted from you. If you follow the gods, things are surely added onto you. Good thing I read the journal. I hope everyone else did, too. I know that sounded too mathy to be false. I bet that if I looked at the scroll, or at least the photograph I took, it would show a one preceding Sobek. I was right. The obelisks don't tell the whole story. The scroll and the obelisks tell the story together. Maybe with all these crystals set properly, I can... I can... Uh, okay, that's where I run out of ideas, but something cool should happen, I hope.
your powers combined, I wield the crystal containing the power of the gods. And I don't know what to do with it. If I had access to the time yet, I could head back to my own time and make a fortune, or better yet, make everyone worship me as a goddess. Bring back the Egyptian pantheon. But what can I do here? Wait, an offering to make to the snake, you say? Yes, there is an offering. There is an offering to make to appease the waiting snake. Be gone, scary snake. Hey, it turned into liquid like the crocky. I am starting to think that these creatures aren't entirely natural. Well, well, at least I got rid of the snake. Did you think that was difficult? Hey, voice baby. Go back to helping me instead of taunting me. Now let's see what this snake was hiding. Oh, that's the bar graph from earlier in the temple. I keep hitting it and it does nothing. I keep pressing it and it does nothing. I keep pressing it and it does nothing. I keep pressing it and it does nothing. Maybe we do something if it had power. Because I keep pressing it and it does nothing. But what's it do? Why do I need a bar graph? Is this about the placement rankings of the gods? Which, by the way, Thoth got screwed over because of that damn scroll. He was number one for a time. At least Satesh came dead bloody last. I demand to speak to the wrath. The stairs look way too narrow. If only I could... Oh, derp. The button. That's not a bar graph. Those are stairs. Seems rather obvious in hindsight. Hey, this pool looks familiar. Alex took a picture of this pool in his journal. He said a voice talked to him through telepathy or something. Perhaps I haven't truly made my offering yet. This is a wishing well, and I have what is likely very expensive coinage. Maybe I should drop it in and see what happens. I should brace myself. If this is telepathy, I wonder what it will sound like. I mean, I always imagine pharaohs being incredibly over the top and insane. In the first season of old time, Ra, the creator, made the good world and all that moves and grows. He taught humankind to till the land and tame the beast. But Ra withheld much knowledge, for he saw that we were not yet ready to receive it. We were content with gathering the fruits of the land. Our houses were made of thatch and mud, our implements of stone and clay. We built neither temple nor tomb. Nor did we know the powers of medicine or the secrets of numbers. At an appointed time, the universal god Osiris smiled upon us and sent learned one from above. They offered the gift of enlightenment to our pharaoh and to our highborn, and promised that their offspring would be great. In mind and spirit. Okay, maybe I shouldn't be imagining over the top pompous voices for my next telepathy session. I take full responsibility for causing the message to be filtered through silly. So the alien that brought the technology called themselves Ra? What sounds eerily familiar? And the technology is a gate that allows you to travel to different worlds. That also sounds eerily familiar. Yeah, whatever.